So I know what you're thinking. Dr. Tierney, I signed up for this course to learn about climate change. And then in the first two weeks, all we did was solve these crazy equations with sigmas and fourth roots. Ugh, why? Well, I hear you, but guess what? You know, sometimes you just gotta do the math. Using these crazy equations, we were able to put together a simple model of Earth's climate system and investigate quantitatively the effect that greenhouse gases in the atmosphere have on Earth's surface temperature. That's right, I tricked you guys into writing a climate model on a piece of paper, believe it or not. In this episode, we're gonna explore how and why climate models are some of the most important tools that climate scientists have for studying both past and future climate change. So what exactly is a climate model? A climate model is a large collection of computer code that's used to simulate the Earth system as accurately as possible. The world is broken up into a number of grid cells. Within each grid cell, the model simulates the ocean, the atmosphere, the biosphere, and the land surface, and then combines all these aspects together. The cells communicate with each other to form a global scale climate model. To learn more about how these complex simulations work, I sat down with climate modeling expert, Dr. Gavin Schmidt, who works at the NASA Goddard Institute for Space Studies in New York City. Incidentally, NASA GIS, as it's called, is located above a really famous landmark, the restaurant that was featured in the Seinfeld television show in the 1990s. So while Jerry, Kramer, and their buddies were getting coffee below, the climate modelers at NASA GIS were right upstairs, hard at work. Uh, great. Well, how do climate models work? Uh, they're made up of lots of different components where each component is a process that we think is important. Uh, you know, sunlight uh, being reflected from uh, the ground or from the sea ice or from the ocean. We need to have things that represent the composition of the atmosphere, you know, the chemistry and the aerosols uh, that, that are going on, the biogeochemistry in the ocean. Uh, the uh, the ecosystems, uh, fire, all of these different uh, elements, uh, kind of from that first kind of kernel, have have been incorporated uh, more and more into the climate modeling effort. Um, and then we just link them all together, and then you kind of just see what happens. There are literally hundreds, if not thousands, of processes encoded in these climate models, including clouds, the ocean, ice sheets and of course the land surface, biological processes, and even things like hurricanes and thunderstorms, all brought together into one unifying framework in order to predict both past and future climate. As you can imagine, running all these simulations requires an enormous amount of computing power. Scientists meet this need by setting up large supercomputing centers, such as the National Center for Atmospheric Research's Wyoming Supercomputing Center, which is the home of a 5.34 petaflop computer called Cheyenne. The rapid increase in computing power in the last few decades means that climate modelers have been able to make their models increasingly complex and detailed without sacrificing speed. The interesting thing is that from the beginning of climate modeling to today, the uh, length of time it takes to run a simulation of, uh, of such a length, you know, 100 years or so, uh, basically hasn't changed. These models run at uh, between like two and five uh, years per day. Um, and that allows you to do, say, you know, 100 years in a month or two months. So why are climate models so important? Well, put simply, their only view into the future, our only way of trying to understand what will happen to Earth's climate as greenhouse gases rise. You know, we love observations. We love uh, remote sensing. We love paleoclimate. You know, these uh, tell us in, in some respects uh, what has happened. Uh, but when we're going into the future, um, we have no observations, right? We have no, uh, no way of knowing what's going to happen other than our confidence uh, in physics. The physics of climate change are simple. The more greenhouse gases you have in the atmosphere, the warmer the planet becomes. 
But exactly what happens in the future really depends on us and how much we emit. Climate modelers run a number of different emissions scenarios out to the year 2100 in order to predict changes in temperature, precipitation, sea ice, and our ice sheets. Paleoclimatologists like myself also use climate models to understand the physics of the extreme climate states in the past. For example, cold worlds like the last glacial maximum and warm worlds like the Eocene 50 million years ago when there were no permanent ice sheets and temperatures soared. Moving forward, the million dollar question is, how good are these climate models at predicting future climate change? As the famous saying goes, all models are wrong, but some are useful. The Earth is incredibly complex. It's pretty difficult to simulate everything that's going on with a set of equations. Nonetheless, climate models are an invaluable tool for climate scientists. All these models are wrong, right? So, you know, they're all wrong on uh, sometimes trivial, sometimes fundamental uh, ways, but they are still useful. Um, and we have been able to use them to solve mysteries where you know different data sets gave different responses and it turns out that the model explained how these things could both be true at the same time. Uh, we've used the models to predict uh, what was going to happen a decade, two decades, three decades ahead and if you go back to those early uh, estimates, it turns out we did a really good job at predicting what was going to happen and it's actually happened. Dr. Schmidt and his colleagues recently went back and had a look at climate model projections that were made two decades ago. When they looked at what the model had predicted, they found an incredible agreement with what has actually happened, which suggests that even though these models aren't perfect at representing our incredibly complex climate system, they're actually quite accurate. So when it comes to predicting future climate change, climate models are an important tool to have in our toolbox. And they're not just used in academia. They're also important for a number of industries who use them to predict things like hurricane-related storm surge and other natural hazards. Like I said, in order to understand the climate system, sometimes you've just got to do the math.